Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's video I am going to show you how to build this power box to run your fish finder and to also allow you to have some power ports where you can charge multiple items whilst you're out on your boat. So, let's run through what we need to build this box. So, to make this power box for your fish finder, you're firstly gonna need a box, a plastic box, because plastic is waterproof. This is not actually a waterproof box, but it's good enough. Um, it's got two clips for easy access on the side. They just clip back over like that, and the sides do overlap, so there's no water gonna get under there because this is not gonna get fully submerged. This is only gonna get a few splashes on it, if that. So, this should be ideal. You're then gonna need a battery. This is the battery I've got. Rechargeable, sealed lead acid battery, a 12 volt one. This is from a mobility scooter, ordered this online. And when I show you the box, there it is. Possibly two thirds the size of the box. That's what you want. You're then gonna need a mount for your fish finder. All fish finders have different mounts. This is the mount that comes with the Garmin Striker 4. I've then got a multi-port charging face, which will fix to the front. This again was ordered off online. This one was at Amazon, about 10 pound. This allows me to get USB charging there. Got 12 volt as well under there on off button and the voltage. An inline fuse holder and also a glass fuse. That goes inside there, just like that. And then the holder clamps shut. This will be on the positive feed to your charge plate. Four crocodile clips, male and female bullet connectors and also some female spade connectors. You're gonna need some wire to wire it up. I've got this uh, two core insulated wire. I'm actually gonna just strip this down. I'm gonna use the brown for the live, and the blue for the negative. Strip that down. I can wire everything up with this and my connectors. An old flip flop, a suction mobile phone holder with a multi movable phone front. This one is from Halfords. Some sealant, or as I've got this No More Nails uh, waterproof bonding adhesive. This would adhere as well as seal, so this will do the job. A uh, Dremel or a multi-tool like this. I've got a grinding head. They come with other heads. Some of these other heads may be useful. A sharp Stanley knife blade. Some wire strippers and crimpers a tape measure and a chopping board. So the first thing I want to do is get the battery sitting quite nice and snug in this box. So let's take the lid off and I want to work out what side is going to be the front of the box and what's going to be the back. So I think I'm going to have this side be the front now I there's a reason I'm selecting this this side has got a print on the side of the box so I won't be able to suction my phone holder on this side this side hasn't so I'm just working out what side's going to be best here for my phone to be and it's going to be there so that's going to be the front what I'm going to do I want to locate the battery towards the back here and I'm going to measure the gap between the battery and the front of the box, which is 50 mil. And that is 20 centimeters long. So, first things I want to do is to get two long sections of this that are 20 centimeters by five centimeters. 
get these cut out. They're going to act as a little surround to the battery. So there we have it, I have one piece cut there, one piece cut for the side. The battery then will slot into there and won't slide around. So I can take that out. What I'm gonna do is just glue them down with a bit of the sealant. There we have it, voila. The next thing I'm gonna do is offer up the plate for the charging uh, elements and the on off switch. And I'm gonna offer it up on the side, keeping it quite high. Try and get it centered. And then with any marker, pen or anything that um, you can see well with, go around these circles, making sure this plate doesn't move as I do it, like so. And then with the Dremel and the grinding bit, I'm just gonna grind into the, each one of these and then grind it out. So I've now just ground out four holes there. The plate goes over there like so. And I've just checked that these fit in each one, they're tight. Oh, they all work, so that's good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna glue that plate on there. Again with the waterproof bonding. So let's do that now. That will fit on there. I'm then gonna insert the switches into the holes. There we have it, the plate mounted on the front. You can see them all in the back there. They're nicely sealed, as watertight as can be, and bonded, so they are fine. Now, what I'm gonna do is strip down, down some of this two core insulated wire, take some of the insulation off, and we're gonna get this wired up, ready to clip to the battery to get these live. Right, looks a bit of a mess in front of me here, but let's get the wiring done for this front of unit. So, first thing coming from the battery is gonna be an inline fuse. So, to connect that to the battery, I'm gonna use a crocodile clip there. To connect that to the crocodile clip, I'm gonna use one of these bullet connectors, a male one, so basically, I'm gonna get the wire in there and then just crimp that so that's in place. I'm then gonna take this inline fuse and section of the brown life, put together and insert them into a spade end connector. So we can get them both in together. I'm then cutting that live wire about four inches, like so. I'm gonna strip that. There. And again. Strip the end of the bit I've just cut. For those two bits together. into a second spade and we want another two of these done exactly the same as that. So here we have the uh, live wire that's gonna connect up all of those implements on the front. Crocodile clip, inline fuse, and then four spade end connectors that will connect each uh, charging port to another. And now basically I've got to do the same with the neutral minus the inline fuse. So I'm gonna do four spade end connectors to a crocodile clip. I'm gonna get that done now. 
So there we are with the wiring. That's the live. It's neutral. All I need to do now is connect that in the right order onto these connectors. So let's see. See? So then we go the opposite way with neutral two. Do that. There we go, we have that all wired up. Now all I need to do is because these overhang where the battery are a little bit too much, I'm just gonna bend these over gently via the pressure. Just get these bent over and out of the way. There we go. Now that should all the battery will slide in there like so. Brown onto the live. There we go. We now have power, as you can see. There we are. 12.6 volts coming through. So I can now charge a phone on these if I need to. Done. All right, let's take these off. Next thing on the cable to my fish finder. I'm again going to put two um, crocodile clips on this. So I'm going to use bullet connectors again, crimp them on, then slide them into the crocodile clips just for easy connections to the battery. There we go. Voila, that is ready to go. Next thing is to get the fish finder mount securely fastened on to the lid. So I'm gonna mark this circle roughly, just with this marker. And you could just bolt this down with small bolts. I haven't got any small bolts. I'm gonna utilize what I've got. So what I'm gonna do is rough up this area with the Dremel. I'm gonna adhere this with the bond that I've got and then just put some screws through with some raw plugs on the other side that will just hold it and then I can Cut these off. So there it is. The surface has been roughed up. I'm going to get some adhesive on here. Right, so I'll put the adhesive on, but I've just left out the uh, the area where the clip is because I don't want to glue that down. This has got a clip on it. So then I can just push that down there. Get that in place, like so. Like that is on there. There we have it, the mount plate has dried now. And what I have done is I've added some extra security. Um, well, bolts would be ideal. I didn't have bolts, so I used screws. And I cut them down. There's the raw plugs on the end to hold them in. And then I've cut them down short. But bolts would have been ideal. They're all sealed as well. Because the uh, bond is in there. So this is all sealed with no chance of water getting through this the last thing i've done is on the raised bit of the lid here i've cut a hole there with my dremel a large grinding circle and this is for the power cable to come through and i've made it just big enough so i've got squeezes to get it through i don't want this hole to be massive because there's a chance that water will get through then. So I'm pushing this cable through as best as I can. There's the cable coming through the hole at the back. We're nearly done. This box is nearly built. Here we can see everything's inside. All the cables. The last thing to do is to attach the mobile phone holder. And this is if you want to be using your fish finder and 
like Navionics on your phone. So on the side here, you can position it how you want it. Just get this a bit damp, shit on there at an angle. There we go. Voila, your box is ready for action. And there we have it. Small box, very compact. Battery in it that runs a USB cable, well, USB port on the front. Also a 12 volt um, cigarette, 12 volt connector, and your fish finder. Also somewhere to put your phone, all in one compact little box. There we have it, pretty easy to make. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. I'm sure there's other things to add to it. Um, this is just the way I've made this box for use on my sieve. And I'm sure it's gonna be really, really handy. Anyway, until next time, tight lines.